If you want to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is on Instagram. If you just want to say what up, if you want to tell me you love my videos, you can tell me you hate my videos, but the best way to do that is on Instagram. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Jim Jones refused to talk about 6 9 during his interview on The Breakfast Club yesterday, but he had a lot to say about 50 Cent. And Waka Flocka says he influenced today's hip hop sound. Little Peep's mom blames his managers for his death and something nobody's talking about but Stunner for Vegas passed out on stage yesterday. Let's talk hip hop. Alright, so uh, Jim Jones went up on The Breakfast Club yesterday and he was talking to The Breakfast Club, right? About, you know, music, about what's going on in hip hop, about a lot of stuff, right? And this is good because Jim Jones did have a lot of stuff to address because he's been mentioned a few times lately within like the past month, right? Usually Jim Jones is pretty low key, uh, but he be chilling, right? Uh, but in the last month, it, a lot of things were going on. So one of the things that happened was, you know, that 6 9 went on a stage and he was pointing out everybody right talking about yo uh, this person did that Casanova was involved in this yeah trippy red did that I don't know Cardi B may be from this gang or that gang you know what I'm saying um, and people were like whoa right so the whole thing is that the reason why the prosecution was asking you know 6 9 a lot about other rappers is because they want to of course the FBI wants to try to build case against other rappers too who may be uh, laundering money through you know their record label from the gang or paying and funding these gangs or whatever like that just like 6 9 was doing so trust me when 6 9 is under oath and he says a rapper's name these uh agents of the fbi will go and investigate these people right um so the breakfast club they asked him about you know uh jim jones about you know 6 9 mentioning his name on the stand you know mail murder the wiretaps and all that stuff right and he declined to answer any of that stuff right because it's crazy and of course I, I if i was jim jones i wouldn't answer any of that too because you know that literally the feds are watching right you know that literally the feds are looking at you right you know that your phone jim jones is probably bugged your phone your phone this phone right here is probably bugged by the FBI, you know what I'm saying? So it was smart for him not to say nothing. You know, damn well they, they gonna look at the uh, Breakfast Club interview. That's the first thing the FBI looks at, right? So very smart, right, in his case. But then they asked him about something else too, about 50 Cent and all these allegations about Jim Jones being an informant, right? Now, we all know that uh, CEO Chris was an informant down with the FBI and he's the one, the main one, that helped them take down uh, Nine Trey, right? Uh, we also know that once the FBI got close to taking down Nine Trey, they contacted, um, I, I don't know what his name was, but 6 ix driver and they had him working with them too. So two informants, right? 6 9 did start working and was an informant for them as well too, but that was only after 6 9 was locked up in jail. Once he realized, yo, this is not a game, he said, all right, fine, 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 I'll tell you what's going on, right? Now, Jim Jones was caught on wiretaps talking to Mel Murder, but wasn't really saying nothing too crazy, just kind of giving Mel Murder advice, telling him not to go up to TMZ, let Shoddy go up to TMZ because he's articulate and he could let them understand 6 9s position within the gang culture, right? Um, but... Nonetheless, he, Jim Jones was on a wiretap and Jim Jones was mentioned in the court documents and on stand uh, by 6 9 and the prosecutors. And so because of this, you know, Jim Jones is probably under investigation right now, right? Um, a lot of people say, well, hey, if they mentioned Jim Jones on the stand, if his name is in the court documents, and if he was on the wiretap, then why is he not arrested like everybody else? I mean, they even picked up 6 9 Shit, why they didn't pick up Jim Jones, right? Um, especially since it sounded like Jim Jones was giving advice to the godfather of 9 Trey. So if Jim Jones is giving advice to the, to the top dog, then Jim Jones must be the top, top dog. And they wonder why he's not locked up. And a lot of people were, not a lot of people, but rumors on the internet have been saying that Jim Jones is an informant for the FBI, right? Now, me personally, Johnny Fastlane, I refuse to believe that Jim Jones is any kind of informant. I do not think it's true. I refuse to believe that Jim Jones is working with any police, any cop, any CO, any anything. If you know Jim Jones, if you know him in the street, then you know Jim Jones ain't about that life, about the cop life, about the telling life, about the testifying life. And, and I'm just going straight up sit up here and tell you that right now, right? But 
I'm, you know, I'm just me. And you got people like 50 Cent who, 50 Cent and Jim Jones, they kind of go back and forth with each other a lot, right? Um, 50 Cent and Jim Jones always troll each other on the internet and that's cool. They're both from the same era. They're both kind of around the same age, right? And it's all fun and games when, you know, 50 Cent is like, oh, Jim Jones in the gym, but it looks like he skipped leg day, right? Or when Jim Jones, you know, says something like, you know, 50 Cent reminds us every day why he was shot nine times or something, you know, funny like that, right? But when, you know, 50 Cent puts out a story that we don't know if it's real or we don't know if it's not, um, it just kind of looks, you know, real weird and sus, that is a little bit much, right? So, there's a story from this blog that was floating around. Um, I didn't talk about it. I didn't report on it because I don't think that the story is accurate whatsoever. But the story says what the rumor is that Jim Jones must be an informant because he didn't get arrested, right? But 50 Cent actually gave some kind of validity to that article because he posted it on his Instagram, right? Um, and then, of course, you know, a lot of people were like, yo, 50, you wildin', blah, blah, blah. You going a little bit too far. And I think that 50 went a little bit too far too. And Jim Jones talked about that on the breakfast club and said that you know what trolling each other is all fun and games but you don't you know cross that line and involve you know say, trying to tarnish somebody's name saying oh they rock with the police because there's a lot of people that will just believe 50 cent based off of the fact that he's 50 cent you know um Jim Jones said that's not cool, that's foul, and that's something that does need to be dealt with, right? Then Freaky Zeke got on the mic and he was talking a little bit about the whole situation. He expressed his disdain for it, right? Uh, but then a little bit after the whole Breakfast Club interview, Freaky Zeke went on Instagram uh, and basically commented on the Breakfast Club's little clip of their interview, right? And what Freaky Zeke said was that they cut out um, the part about me punching 50 in the face, right? Not saying that he punched 50 in the face but saying that he wants to punch 50 in the face basically like he will physically fight 50 cent for what he said about jim jones right he wants to defend his mans right um and all of that makes complete sense right um and it's a little crazy but i can understand also why the breakfast club would have edited that out because they don't want to perpetuate that kind of thing or even bring that kind of energy to where it needs to be especially with these dudes who are street dude it's not like it's trippy red saying and he's gonna punch, I don't know, skinny from the nine in the face, right? Uh, this is like some real street dudes. They all live in the same area, kinda, like the tri-state area and things can get real. And I'm sure the Breakfast Club is like, you know what? I am what I don't want to be the one to facilitate that. You feel me? Um, so it all makes sense, right? But, uh, you know, I agree with uh, Jim Jones. 50 Cent crossed the line a little bit, right? So, you know, also, uh, TMZ caught up with Blueface, right? And they asked Blueface about, you know, the whole 6 9 thing and whether or not he uh, could come back to hip hop or come back to rap. Uh, and, you know, isn't it crazy that he just signed a $10 million deal? $10 million contract. Nine, school York crib. Hey, if you come to Cali, you feel me? I'm gonna have my mans right here. So y'all see, right, that Blueface is like, yo, 6 9 cannot come to California. If he do, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to have this dude lay him down. I'm going to have this dude take him out, right? Um, so it's all of that. It's all of that, right? Um, but, you know, we will see what happens. Uh, this whole situation is crazy. Um, and, you know, 6 9 is locked up and he's still shaking up hip hop. But uh, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments down below. Hey, look, man. All that, that list that everybody doing this shit. That little rap list shit. Look, man, I know I was, I don't want to be on that shit. First of all, I'm not from Atlanta. I'm from Clayton County, and I was born in Jamaica, Queens, New York. So I can't be on that list. If you wasn't born in Atlanta, why the fuck you on these lists? But I will say this, nigga, the sound of hip-hop today is because of Waka. Fuck. These beats are because of me. Southside and Lex Luke. Hey, look, so I can play and be on the list, but I don't give a fuck about no list. Nigga, we doing this shit to get out the gutter, bro. I don't see niggas in, in the EDM world saying who the number one is this, or in pop music, who the number one. Why every time we come to our community, we gotta compete to be number one? Man, fuck being number one, bro. Who get more money on show? Who got ice? Who doing shit for their community? Who really was broke five years ago and really up like fuck? Nigga, you number one. Who really knocking out these shows? Come on, bro, that's number one, my boy. Stop letting that list get to y'all niggas' head, bro. That shit lame, bro. I'm good guy. I'm big guy, too, nigga. Jesus 
price. All right, so you got Waka Flocka, right? Um, and I agree with him 50% uh, of what he's saying right here in this video, right? And we're gonna break the whole thing down, right? So first and foremost, before we even talk about how he said that the sound of today in hip hop uh, is, you know, based off of him, I agree with him on that. Here's where I disagree with him though, real quick, before we get into that other part, and I'll tell you why I agree with him on his sound, right? But he's talking about, first of all, all right, Waka Flocka, you wasn't, you know, top 10 on the list. You wasn't top five on the list. You're not number one on the list, right? There was two lists that came out recently. One is a list that Gucci Mane reacted to. Gucci Mane was like 13 on the list. Waka Flocka was, you know, I don't even know if he was on, well, he was, but he was like way in the 20s or something like that, right? And it was the top 50 Atlanta rappers, right? And then you have the whole, uh, the other list that came out, which is T.I.'s list of the top rappers of all time, right? And I don't think Waka Flocka was on that one at all. And the other one for the Atlanta rappers, he was like way closer to 50 than he was closer to one, right? So I understand your little feelings are hurt and you don't want to seem like, oh, you jacking that list like that or that, yo, I, I don't care. I don't even want to be on the list. So huh, fuck y'all, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of weird because it's almost like he's trying to play or clown people, hip hop fans who care about the list. Like y'all really care about some little fuck ass list? Like you a lame, you know what I'm saying? First of all, I guess that makes me a lame, me, Johnny Fastlane, I guess that makes me a lame then because I do care about the list, right? You have people that, you know, dress up in elaborate costumes and go to Comic-Con. You have people that buy season tickets to go to every single game, you know, that their team go uh, has in their city. You have people that go, you know, travel across the world just to, you know, visit some uh, hole in a, in a side of a mountain and, and dig for treasure or whatever the case may be. Everybody has something that they like. So, sorry, Waka Flocka, you want to call people that like rap lame because you mad that you wasn't on no list is bugged out to me. That's, that's what I got to say about that. The other part of what I have to say, though, is that Waka Flocka is definitely right, though, when he's talking about how the sound of hip hop today is because because of him, right? Southside and that nigga Lex Luger, right? Because we can talk about hip hop, right? To me, hip hop sounds two ways right now. It either sounds like everybody got their flow from like, you know, 3-6 Mafia with auto-tune, right? Everybody's da 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 right? Like 3-6 Mafia with auto-tune or Bone Thugs and Harmony with auto-tune, right? So half of the people are crooning and singing. You got your little babies, your young thugs, your Migos, um, you know, your Cardi B a little bit, but then uh, the other half of the people, they are taking, you know, Waka Flocka sound completely completely, right? You know, your 6 9 this and 6 9 that you know, super gangster aggressive music, right? Bobby Schmurda, Mitch caught a body about a week ago, you know, um, Young M.A., ooh, you know, Cardi B, you know, Bodak Yellow, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Pop Smoke, welcome to the party. Like that really hardcore, grimy, hood kind of, you know, sound all came from, I go hard in the motherfucking paint, nigga. Leave you stinking, nigga. What the fuck you thinking, nigga? Boom. Like, all of that came from that, right? It also came from Waka Flocka, right? I fuck my money, yo. Yeah. You know, bought another Rolls Royce, the remix with Puffy and 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 um and Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? So yes, Waka Flocka sound did that heavy, like that whole drill movement, all of that. Waka Flocka did influence it, and he's damn right, right? And he said that he influenced the sound because he knows that he should be higher up on the list in the hip hop game, uh, at least for these Atlanta rappers. And, and Waka Flocka is right. You should be higher on the list because you do have a lot to do with the influence of hip hop today, but you can't uh, in the same statement shit on the list because you're not there and try to act all national like, huh, yo, I don't give a fuck about no list cause I ain't on that bit. Like, no, because if you was number five, you wouldn't be saying that. You'd be like, damn right I'm on the list and I should be on the list because I influence hip hop today and hip hop sound, which you right, my dude, but come on, don't shit on the list. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments down below.
show. So Little Peep's mom, right, um, files a lawsuit against uh, the tour company and Little Peep's management, and they and she's trying to basically say that she um, thinks that they are responsible for Little Peep's death, right? And this is crazy to me, right? Because everybody, I get it, right? You're the mom, right? You want to somebody to pay. You you're grieving. You want to blame somebody for Little Peep's death, your son's death, the person that you love, right, or loved, right? And you, you can't blame him, cause he's gone and you love him. So now you gotta find somebody else to blame. So you wanna blame, you know, his tour company, his management, you know, somebody, right? And this is crazy to me, right? So she basically says in the documents that, you know, uh, one time she went to a party with, you know, a dinner actually with Little Peep, uh, and his management and everything like that and you know his manager one of them stood up and they were like Yeah, you know little peep you the man you the shit everything like that and I bought a gift for you Here's a bottle of pills, you know, what I'm saying a bottle of Xanax Hey, I know you like the Zans and you know little peep took them and was like, oh hell yeah I got some Zans, right? She also pointed out another time where she met little peep like on one of his tour dates that he was so high And so like leaned off of them Zans that he couldn't even speak to her like he was just like Hey, like just super high and couldn't even communicate with her right and I'm sure like seeing all that stuff was kind of sad and then shortly after that he overdosed on drugs right but here's the thing little peeps a grown-ass man right and your record label and your tour management and your management they give you what you need right so some people you know like a Snoop Dogg he's like give me a pound of weed up in the studio and you know what his people around him will get him a pound of weed right some people don't smoke don't drink like 50 cent and let me get you know 10 Avion waters and all the red skittles in New York right and they're gonna bring him 10 Avion waters and red skittles right if young thug is in the studio he might say I need a pint of lean and four strippers right and they'll bring them a pint of lean and four strippers whatever gets your creative juices flowing right and everybody's different everybody's you know an individual for me shit I might need some beard oil and a motherfucking you know hamburger or something I don't know you feel me but everybody gets their juices flowing in a different way right and little peep love to get high Right. And so, yeah, his manager was management was bringing him drugs and everything like that. But that's because he wanted it. That's how he got his juices flowing. Right. Uh, a nigga, if I was at a dinner and somebody was giving me a gift, I bet you they wouldn't stand up and give me a bottle of Zans because they know I don't fuck with that shit. Right. But if somebody's going to be bold enough to stand up and gift you a bottle of Zans, then it's safe to say that you love you some Zans. Right. So why are you blaming his management? Why are you trying to sue them for whatever, right? So it's unspecified, uh, the amount of money that she's asking for. But to me, to be truthfully honest, I think the money's starting to dry up. Lil Peep was a talented motherfucker, but he never had no hits, hits, not like that, right? They dropped the album. I think that him and McConan is still supposed to be coming out with something, right? Um, but if the money is not around, then where are you supposed to get paid from, right? Little Peep ain't sending money back to you, back to Long Island no more, right? So now what you do, right? You try to sue his management company and try to get whatever you can out of him, right? And I am sorry, and it's R.I.P. Little Peep, and I want that man to rest, right? But if you like to get high, and the reason why you dead is because you overdosed on drugs that you love, then it's sad, but you know, my man just got a little bit too high, you know, the other night. But uh, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments down below. Holy shit. Holy shit. They ain't got no, hold on. They ain't got no paramedic in this smoke for the night like that, bro. I got paramedic in the Yo, I got something for her. Oh, shit.
Yo, so that's Thunder Four Vegas, right? And for y'all that don't know, Thunder Four Vegas is like the babies, like mans in them, right? Everywhere the baby is, I don't care what interview he's on, whether he's up at Funk Flex freestyling, if he's on the Breakfast Club, no matter where he's at, he got Thunder Four Vegas right here next to him, right? Um, and all that's cool, right? And they also got songs together, and I think maybe you know Thunder Four Vegas is signed to the baby's record label, Billion Dollar Baby, right? I'm not 100 sure, but I think he is, right? Maybe that's also the baby's like number one artist too, right? And all that is cool. So they on stage together, they performing, and uh, Stunning for Vegas goes like this to the baby, and you can see it in his face, like he's looking at the baby, mad weird, mad strange, like uh oh my nigga, and then just kind of whoop passes out, right? But he doesn't hit the floor too hard, right? He's like, it looks like he's unconscious for less than like I would say like three seconds, and then he starts moving around a little bit, right? Um, and then the baby's like, yo, we ain't got no paramedics in here. He goes, yo, I know what to do, right? He brings him over something in a little package. I don't know what it is to me it looks like chocolate m&ms but i'm sure it's probably not chocolate m&ms right and then he brings over a bottle of water and he's like yo take this whatever whatever are you okay bop 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 then son of four vegas gets up i mean he passed out maybe for like that whole video was 39 seconds and he was standing up in the beginning of the video and after the video so he was probably passed out for like 20 seconds right real quick gets back up and then you know the video cuts so i don't know what happened after that maybe he went backstage to like take a break or something like that right this is crazy, man. And I just gotta be like, yo, you know, drink water, you know, eat right, watch your health, get your sleep. When you're on tour, um, it's hard and you might not even know it's coming, but you might be chilling, you might be turned up, and then boom, you know, pass out because it's 11:30 p.m. and you ain't eat all day, right? And your body is running on fumes, or maybe you ain't getting no sleep in two or three days because you're just traveling, traveling, and traveling, and it's hard to get good sleep on a bus or whatever like that. But you gotta watch your health, man. You don't want this thing to drive you down the wrong path and just like fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to Son of Four Vegas. My prayers go out to him uh, and the baby. And, you know, hopefully he's all right, man. But let me know what y'all think about this and everything else in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Follow me at Johnny Fastlane on Instagram and y'all already know what to do. Peace.